Hi everyone, you're watching the GWM catch up for finals day. What a finals day it was, celebrating 60 incredible years at this iconic event and what a day, especially if you're Australian. Look at that, that's the trophy, one of the most special trophies in the game and it went down in incredible fashion, celebrating a back-to-back -back run for Tyler Wright, defending her Bells trophy and look at her road to the final. All the world champions on her end of the draw. Also at the top, it was a youthful movement. Molly Picklam, wearing yellow for good reason, was able to meet up with Tyler in the final. But how about Tyler's road? She's really had trouble with Car Carissa Moore, more specifically in the early stages of her career, but that's all changing. Back-to-back -back seasons, she's beat Rissa Bells. Last year it was the final, this year early in the quarterfinals, but she was enthused. She kept reminding people she's doing it her way, and it really showed in an incredible fashion. Picking the right waves, real powerful, changing it up with variety, really dismantled Steph Gilmore into a, a crazy final with Molly Picklum. They were talking a little bit of smack out there, and I asked Tyler on stage what they were saying. She would not tell me, but they've got a lot of history. I can't wait for more finals with Tyler and Molly Picklum. Wright moves all the way up to number two in the world with that big win, her 16th CT win of an amazing career, and Molly will stay in yellow as we head to Margaret River for stop number five of the season. Final bracket for the men was solid. Ewing at the top end, Kalanen at the bottom end. Those two are teammates. They stay together on the road for a long, many, many years. But look at the different styles they had. Ethan got the rematch with Toledo, and our Cal had redemption on John John. John gave our Ryan a lot of trouble back in the early stages of his career, specifically in 2016. But something special about Ethan Ewing, his mom, Helen Lambert, won this event 40 years ago, back in 1983. It's always been an event that he's wanted to win, and now he gets to have a Bells trophy and put it right next to his mom's. He's had that Bell that she won right next to his bed his entire life. And look how spring-loaded he was. Man, he was so good with selection. I mean, he entered the final with only 13 waves surfed, but then his game plan just changed took over the final in the lineup with Ryan Callanan. His activity was solid because he really put this one away early. Adapted to the higher tide conditions and he is able to achieve his biggest goal. Great one for the Aussies. Cale Bell Warren is coach celebrating right next to Connor O'Leary. One of those feel good moments in the 60th edition of the event. Big news on the rankings. Joao Chianca will wear yellow for the first time. He's now world number one heading into the west. Also seeing Ethan Ewing catapult into a final five stop at number four in the world. John's now up to seven, so some big movers there. Let's turn the page though. Officially confirming uh, top 11 making the mid-season cut. So that stops at Medina. Everyone behind him isn't confirmed. So only 11 spots remaining as we try to seal the deal with the mid-season cut at Margaret River at stop number five. Things getting very exciting. Check out worldsurfling.com for more highlights, athlete updates, and full heat replays from the Rip Curl Pro Bells Beach presented by Bonsoy. And tune in Thursday, April 20th for the call out of the Western Australia Margaret River Pro.